Time for your weather and traffic on the 8. degrees right now in Newport Ritchie east winds at three miles per hour. So actually during the afternoon 66 degrees in Tampa 64 in Clearwater. It's still below average but it's a lot warmer than it's been so stay with us. We're going to have more from the roof and we're also going to track weekend rain chances and a closer look at Super Bowl forecast. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Lee, and good morning, everybody. So just letting you know that um, we are watching an accident, I-75 northbound. This is right at Fowler Avenue here, and I can tell you it's off to the side of the road a little bit, so thankfully it's not causing a direct impact. But as we can see from this live look, traffic is building along I-75 northbound. We'll have a more closer look at this as well as some road closures associated with Super Bowl 55 coming up next. Live. This is News Channel 8 Today on your side. Good morning to you on this Thursday and welcome to News Channel 8 Today. I'm David Espinosa Hall. And I'm Avery Cotton. Thanks for joining us. I am on the fourth floor veranda at our studios this morning with everything Super Bowl to get you ready for the big game. And I tell you what, we have a beautiful, dare I say, the most beautiful view of the Riverwalk where the Super Bowl experience is set up. Now off in the distance behind me, Raymond JD, I'm sit James Stadium sitting pretty this morning. But it's cold out here. Max Fenner, 8 meteorologist Lee Spann is with me. We're all bundled in our, our scarves, our gloves. And we're all in our red as yep. well, getting ready for the Big Bucks uh, experience. But today will be the last of the really cold mornings. I know that's not uh, bad news for a lot of folks. Unfortunately, it is the coldest of the morning. So they had that freeze warning, Citrus Hernando, Inland Pasco County. Temperatures are already below 30. And then if you're east of I-75 in this purple area, that's the frost advisory. Let's look at these current temperatures. At 6 a.m., 29 in Zephyr Hills, 28 Crystal River. 34 now in Bartow and in uh, Lakeland and right here in downtown Tampa. We just dropped to 45 degrees and believe me, those temperatures may continue to drop until the sun rises. So 40 in Tampa. So you're surprised, I bet, that my fantastic scale is up to six. It's because it's going to warm up so fast up to 66 degrees later today with lots of sunshine. Stay with us because I do have the forecast for the Super Bowl experience. It's right behind us and that's where my colleague Amanda Holly is. We're going to check in with her coming up. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Lee. And we are now three days out from the Super Bowl. More and more visitors are showing up in the Bay Area. And while events here along the Riverwalk have attracted some pretty big crowds, the area is not seeing as many visitors as originally expected. Eight on your sides, Beth Rousseau is live downtown with a look at the concerns about how this will affect the already struggling tourism industry. Beth? Good morning, Avery, and it's something that everyone in the city of Tampa is worried about. Tourism leaders say that they plan to head for coronavirus because it's been something that they've been accounting for for months. What they didn't account for, though, is this. Hotels, restaurants, bars only welcoming fans from one team base. That's because the Buccaneers are making history as the first hometown team to play for the title. Local tourism leaders say it's unclear how that's going to affect the amount of money brought in by this game. They tell eight on your side, though, the event is putting worldwide attention on Tampa, so we could see more of an effect in the future as people hear about the Bay Area and visit in the coming months and even years. They say that no matter what, this weekend will provide some sort of economic boost, which is a good thing because take a look at these numbers. This time last year in Tampa Bay, hotel occupancy was at 75%. Today, we're sitting at 55%. And then if you head down the road to St. Pete Clearwater, they were at 70 to 90 percent in February 2020. Now it's down to 50 to 70 percent at times. Starting tonight, the city of Tampa is ramping up enforcement of the mask mandate at Super Bowl events, and it comes as Hillsborough County officials worry about a spike in COVID cases after the big game. One health expert saying a surge is inevitable as people attend Super Bowl events and host watch parties. And while the Super Bowl is in town, it's giving people the opportunity to share some pretty fun experiences. And one of those is Technology Village. It's on the Tampa River Walk. I can see it from where I'm standing right now. Uh, eight on your sides, Marco Villarreal is live there this morning with all the latest on this. Good morning to you, Marco. Hey, good morning. I almost feel like we should just go outside and go across the river and wave at each other and do that. Good, good morning, Avery. So here we are at Technology Village this morning, 
And this is a pretty cool spot. One of many along the Riverwalk here and in Tampa that uh, is allowing people to come out, have a good time, and enjoy the Super Bowl experience. And Tyler, tell us a little bit more about what goes on here is Jenna Groom. She's with the Super Bowl host committee. Jenna, good morning. Uh and we have plenty more Super Bowl coverage still ahead, so stick with us. But for now, let's check in with David on the other news of the day. Hey, David. Hey, Avery, we got a lot going on today. The time is 6.06 .06 and jury trials are about to resume here in Hillsborough County. Now, they were suspended about a month ago because of a steep increase of COVID-19 cases. Starting Monday, they will return and return slowly. All other in-person court proceedings will remain suspended until a tentative date of March 1st. Today we are celebrating the birthday of a civil rights icon. Rosa Parks ignited what many consider to be the official start of the civil rights movement when she refused to give up her bus seat to a white passenger. Her arrest ignited a boycott against Montgomery, Alabama's segregated bus system. Parks died in 2005 of natural causes at the age of 92. Well, it's another successful launch for SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, and the skies were so clear early this morning, you can see it going up right here in Tampa Bay. Look at that. This right here is a look at the view over Tampa International Airport as that rocket was carrying up 60 more Starlink satellites. Another launch is set for 514 tomorrow morning. Let's get back on up to Avery with more big game coverage. Hey, Avery. Hey, David. Yeah, this year's Super Bowl is making history for so many reasons. The pandemic, the first home team to play in, the, in their home stadium, and the smallest crowd. And Lee, I know we're all bundled up right now, but it's gonna be a really pretty day. A beautiful day. So by the afternoon, sunglasses, not even a jacket, but you need all of those layers right, right now. Let me show you at 608 what it looks like right in downtown Tampa overlooking the Super Bowl experience, 45 degrees. Sun's going to rise at 715, so we still have another hour or so where that temperature could drop, and especially the first half of Sunday for your tailgate. And then I do think the rain chances are coming to an end, but they still could be around by kickoff. That's Sunday, but the NFL experience is happening right now, and that's where Amanda Holly is. Amanda, I'm out here today with you. I am commiserating. Yeah, uh, it, it's a little chilly out here. I'm waiting on that southerly wind to bring in those warmer temperatures. Until then, this is what I look like. I've got all the layers on. I've got the gloves on. And we're about to do the obstacle course because we have to stay warm out here somehow. My, uh, my toes are cold. Luckily, as we go into the afternoon, those temperatures will be a little warmer than they were yesterday. And uh, that's nice because it's not going to get as cold tonight either. So those temperatures will only drop into the 50s. So you won't need as thick of a coat. And tomorrow and the next day, we're going to be even warmer and warmer. Yes, on Saturday, we'll be dealing with those rain chances, which we'll talk a little bit more coming up. <laughs> we'll toss it on over to you, Deanne. Can we talk about the talent? Like, my girl just literally <laughs> talked about weather and went through an obstacle course. <laughs> I see you, sis. I see you. All right. Thanks, Amanda. Good morning, everybody. As far as traffic right now, things aren't too bad when it comes to the situations, at least on our major interstates. But if we take a look at, at some of our maps here, I can tell you that there are several road closures associated with the Super Bowl. This includes in Ybor City. This includes in downtown Tampa. Several roads closed, including the Harbor Island Bridge. And I can tell you Water Street is closed. Now, we do have an entire list of road closures on our website wfla.com but in the meantime let's head on up to paul amison in eagle 8 hd he's actually above an accident along hey good morning deanne we're not sure what this is this is we're going to call this police activity on i-75 northbound just north of i-4 you see three hillsborough county sheriff cars you see the deputies out on the side of the roadway with people, but we're not sure what they're doing here. All we do know, the road rangers here, and traffic is slowing down in this area, so please be careful. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Paul. And now we feel Amanda's pain today. We feel it. I just, I was sitting here thinking if we had to anchor the news while doing an obstacle course. Listen. All the talent goes to Amanda. All the talent <laughs> goes to Amanda. I wouldn't have on no heels, no mm -hmm. 
Nope. She did great. <laughs> Thanks, Deanne. We'll check in with you soon. Okay, so Super Bowl fever taking over Tampa Bay. A look at how one neighborhood is showing some big support for the Bucks QB. Speaking of the QB, Tom Brady fluent in football, but what about other languages? Why his family says he's on the bench when it comes to throwing around another language around the house. Stick with us. You're watching News Channel 8 today. Traffic on News Channel 8 is sponsored by the personal injury law firm of Culpepper Curland. The 8-day forecast on News Channel 8 is sponsored by Brandon Ford, the world's largest volume Ford dealer. If you want to pay more, that's your business. If you want to pay less, that's Brandon Ford's business. Shop online at brandonford.com. This is your official Buck Station, News Channel 8. Welcome back to Time is 6.15, and we have a warning for you about a spike in car thefts. Specifically, we're talking about car part thefts. People are stealing the expensive catalytic converter from underneath parked cars in the middle of the night. Now, there are precious metals inside. The price of rhodium in particular is up 800%. This is since March to nearly $20,000 an ounce. Car parts are one of the supply chains still grinding to a halt because of this pandemic. Car parts of all kinds are just sitting on ships right outside of Los Angeles due to coronavirus restrictions at the port there. Also, some grocery stores are still running low on things like paper towels, baking soda, even frozen pizzas. At some restaurants, limited liquor has been a big problem, as well as high costs for gloves and to-go boxes, even straws. Well, this morning, Avery Cotton is outside on that fourth floor veranda with everything Super Bowl related. Good morning to you, Avery. Hey there, David. I cannot believe it. It is three days and counting until the Bucks take on the Chiefs, and you can feel the excitement in the air. All right, so Brady's going to stick to English and X's and O's. Yes. Fluent in those. And plays. Yes. He knows all the calls and which ones to call and when, and that's why he, he is right. who he is. Work on Portuguese in the offseason, right? Yeah. When he eventually retires at 50-something. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Let me show you how cold it is outside right now. We are continuing to watch those uh, cold conditions over a bucktastic view over Raymond James Stadium this morning. Thanks, Eagle 8 HD, for this chilly morning. Uh, as we look over, we see the Chiefs and the Buccaneers on both end zones this morning. And then we're under the freeze warnings in some cases for Citrus Hernando, inland portions of Pasco County, eastern areas, basically east of I-75, you're under a frost advisory. So don't be surprised if you have to do a little scraping off your windshield. Temperatures this morning, 31 in Crystal River. That's the area that is under the freeze warning. It's 29 in Zephyr Hills. It's 45 in Tampa. You notice how it gets a little warmer closer to the coast, 42 in Sarasota. Checked in with my weather watcher, Bob in Venice. He's at 42 degrees this morning as well. Notice what's going to happen on the long range forecast. We're back into the 70s tomorrow, but look what happened Saturday. Rain chances, scattered showers around. And then that all important big game forecast. Most of the rain on Sunday, and there is going to be a lot of rain on Sunday, is going to be the first half of the day, lingering a shower or two around by kickoff before the front lifts back to the north. So today is the last of the cold days. We're in the low to mid, even upper 70s, but this rain on Sunday, that is an unfortunate, but hopefully. It will actually work in the Bucks' favor. Let's check in on traffic on the 8s. All right, thankfully, thankfully, I was able to shed off a few layers or so to head back down to the studio. Good morning, everybody. We're getting a closer look at what Paul was checking out earlier. It's this police activity here along I-75 northbound right at Fowler Avenue. Here's the thing, though. It is causing folks to slow down, so this is why traffic is building along I-75 northbound. So please make sure you're leaving the house just a little bit early. Crank that heater up. Just be a little cozy because you might be stuck in some back-to-back back traffic. Back to you. Thank you, D. The time is almost 6.20 and the Super Bowl is giving some local businesses a special chance to turn things around during the pandemic. Still to come, you got to see how one company hopes the big game will provide a big boost. You're watching News Channel 8 today. It is 6.20. We'll be right back. Max Defender 8 Weather is sponsored by the Law Office of Catania and Catania. It's divinely inspired. I'm freaking out. The most fascinating daytime viewing around. The Drew Barrymore Show. Weekdays at 2 on News Channel 8. Welcome back to News Channel 8 today. So part of the Super Bowl experience is Technology Village, and it's 
right there. <laughs> right on the walk. Right on the other side <laughs> of the river on the river walk. It's a pretty cool standing job yes. so far. Looking great. All right, well, the NFL experience lets you pretend you are a pro player. You can test your skills at passing, kicking, and running drills. Yeah, but how clean are those footballs after everybody's touched them? Well, Aid on your side is going behind the scenes to see how the NFL is keeping things clean in a COVID world. Stick with us. You're watching News Channel 8 today, leaving you with a live look at Raymond James Stadium, where the Super Bowl kicks off in three days. Closed captioning sponsored by Famous Tate.